morning students. I hope all of you are doing well. Okay, so we have another session of our Zoom meeting. Please turn your cameras on and make sure your mics are mute. So last week we looked at types of answer. And with the types of answer, we learned the functions for each. So our topic for today is care and maintenance of answer. Let me go over again, care and maintenance of and so, you know, our objectives for today's lesson is for you to know the steps how to care and maintain a and so. So please pay keen attention during the lesson. You can ask questions at any time. Please just click the icon for Andres and I will be able to put you on. So moving on. Now, for the first step in caring and maintenance of answer, cleaning. Cleaning of answer is very vital. Okay, so after each use, lubricate the blade with pierce wax and wipe off after allowing to soak about 10 minutes. Let me go over again. Cleaning. After each use, lubricate the blade with pierce wax and wipe off after allowing to soak for about 10 minutes. So when we finish using this answer, either we do a project or we just got a small wood or a furniture to construct a furniture, we make sure before we put up the answer in the toolbox or in the safe, we clean the answer by putting a paste wax on it and then wipe it off and allow it to soak for about 10 minutes. Now, moving on, oil the handle. Maintain the wooden handle by regularly rubbing it with boiled linseed oil. Let me go over again. Oil the handle. Maintain the wooden handle by regularly rubbing it with boiled, boiled linseed oil. Now, the reason why we do it is because of wood. Wood is easily cracked and can be rotten very fast. So by us rubbing this oil on the wood, it's just like us rubbing coconut oils and cream on our skin to keep it shiny and nice and smooth. It's the same way why we rub the oil on the handle to keep it smooth and healthy. So it won't be cracked even when we go and use it. So after every use, we clean the handle, then we rub the oil on it. Moving on. Store in a moisture-free area. After using the answer, store it in a moisture-free toolbox or in a dry and safe area. Let me go over again. Store in a moisture-free area. After using the answer, store it in a moisture-free toolbox or in a dry and safe area. Now, the reason why we say store it in a moisture-free area when we say moisture, we mean wetness. No, we can, after we finish using the answer, we leave it right outside on the table where it is, the sun is shining and another day comes, then it rains. In that way, we're going to damage the blade and we're going to damage the handle. So, we have to continuously keep buying tools and replacing answer after answer after answer and that won't be beneficial. So we save it, we save the answer or we store it in a safe toolbox that is moisture free. So no wetness should be in the box. Make sure your answer is dry before you put it inside the box. So you can preserve the answer, you can preserve the blade and the handle which is very vital for the answer. Now moving on. So these are some safety steps before using an answer. Now, safety is vital. You must know your safety before you go and use anything. You must be careful before you walk across the road because if you don't be careful, you know incident and accident can happen within seconds. So, moving on. Safety steps before using a answer. Wear safety masks and goggles. Now, these are not the regular shades or the sunglasses that we use regularly during the summer times or if you're going to a party or if you're going on the road. 
or what your mom bought for you when you were small or so on. These are professional and much safer glasses and goggles and even masks. Not the mask that you wear during this COVID time. It's a mask that cover your whole face. It'll cover your eyes, your nose, and even your mouth. Now let me continue. Wear safety masks and goggles. Objects being sawed may rebound and hit the person operating the answer. Now remember, this is a boat that we are operating and the saw is on our hand. And we bend over to saw it. Now with the back and the forward motion, will have some even the wood may be may have some knocks or defects that defect can cause the wood to get brickly and with that some pieces of wood can spit up is either on your hand or on your face that's why we always wear appropriate clothing and the face mask and even and the goggles now moving on use it and saw right for as the correct project now, if, let's go back to the types of answer. Let's say we want to use a tenant answer, okay? To cut out the tenant joint. And we don't have this tenant answer, but we have our ribs and narrow bladed saw. Now, the function that the tenant answer will be doing, the rib answer won't be able to perform that function. So, we will have to get the tenant answer to perform the correct function for the project that we'll be doing. Now, avoid using answer, answers that are too big or too small for the project. Same as I was saying, you have to get the correct answer for the correct job. So you can have a desired finish or a perfect finish. Now moving on, inspect answer before every use. For example, loose handle, bent blade or missing blade teeth. Now, we all know that even before we go anywhere, we must check and see if it is safe. Now, before we use our answer, make sure that it is safe, that the blade is intact, that it is not prickly or it is full of rust, and the handle, it is not prickly or cracked, and it should be oiled always after you finish using it. So the next time, it will be perfect. Now, never test the sharpness of the saw blades with your hand. Now, the blade can be very sharp. Even though it may look dull at some times, it is very sharp. So, whenever we get the answer and we want to test if the blade is sharp, we use a wood and not our hands. Because if you use our hand, you can get injured and you may lose the finger. So, moving on. The steps on how to operate the answer. Now, before I go about the steps, I will present you a video of someone operating a ant, a cross-cut answer. So, from that video, I derive these steps. So, here are the steps. Draw a line on the wood you want to cut. Firmly hold or fasten the wood so that it will not move during cutting. Place the saw center, central teeth on the line opposite you and push the saw in a short stroke to start the cut. Now, I'll show you the video so you'll be able to have a clear understanding about these steps. Okay? In this video, you will learn how to use a cross-cut saw. Cross-cut saws are used for cutting across the grain. They may be large or compact and usually consists of closely arranged V-shaped teeth. The tools and materials that you will need are a cross-cut saw, a tri-square, a pencil, a vise, a saw horse, a workpiece, and some scrap wood. The cross-cut saw consists of a handle and a serrated blade designed to cut against the grain. The teeth of the blade are beveled to create a knife-like cut that can sever each individual fibre. Each of these teeth tends slightly towards alternating sides. 
This helps to cut a slot that is wider than the blade, enabling free movement. Use a tri-square and a pencil to mark a line running through all four sides of the piece of wood. Clamp the workpiece with a piece of scrap wood on either side for protection. Hold the saw with your dominant hand. Place the thumb of your free hand on the saw line, displacing the saw slightly wide of the mark and into the waste wood. The extra bit can be reduced later with a plane, file or sandpaper. Make a small groove with shallow pull strokes. Maintain eye line with the workpiece. Keep your shoulders in line with your hand. The saw should be aligned at around 40 degrees. Ensure that the blade is held straight and stays in position. Make sure you use both hands for cutting the workpiece. As you approach the end of the cut, start sawing slowly at a zero degree angle. Hold the workpiece on the side of the cut that isn't clamped to avoid chipping. Unclamp the workpiece. Check with a tri-square if it is cut at a right angle. In case it isn't, you can plane it flat. You can also use a sawhorse to hold the workpiece. Place your knee on top of it and apply your body weight to keep it steady. Remember to hold the end before it falls off. You have now learnt how to use a crosscut saw. Okay Go. students, thank you for observing the video. Now for our concluding activity, I will place it into two groups. Group 1 and Group 2. Now Group 1 will be looking at some steps on how to care and maintain a hand saw. And Group 2 will be looking at some safety tips that you should take before using or operating a hand saw. Okay, group one. Very good. That's a very good point that John bring out. That you should always clean a hand saw after using it. Okay, another one. Very good. After using the hand saw and after cleaning it, you make sure you store it in a moisture free area. Now, moving on to group two. Okay, very good, that's a very good point. Always wear a safety mask and a goggles in case of any object that is coming flying into your face from sawing the wood. Okay, another one. All right, very good, very good. Never test how sharp the blade is with your finger or your hand. That is good, that is a very good point. Now, before you test it on your hands or your finger, make sure you test it on the wood and not your hand because you can get caught and get injured now class that is our end of the lesson i hope that today's lesson was beneficial to you and you go home and do some further reading